to start with derivatives are financial instruments whose price is derived from anything else um, it, here i have mentioned its price is derived from some other financial instrument but, but uh, these are an exchange traded derivative is a financial instrument whose price is derived from the price of some other financial instrument for example you have the futures uh, in case of the futures uh, the price of the future is derived from the price of the underlying stock you have options the price of the option is derived from the price of the underlying uh, stock uh, likewise there could be derivatives whose prices are derived from the price of the weather, the current weather condition the sports uh, score and so on and so forth uh, the next thing is um, within derivatives you have uh, multiple types of uh, derivatives uh, the most common ones are options for futures forwards swaps etc in today's session we will be looking at uh, uh, options uh, primarily so uh, let me define options uh, an option is a special type of derivative instrument where the buyer of the option has the right but not the obligation that is he has the option to buy or sell the underlying at a specific price what does it mean uh, the buyer mm, uh, has the freedom uh, if he chooses he could buy uh, or he could sell but he does not have the obligation so based on the prevailing market conditions if it's favorable to him he can uh, exercise the obligation to buy uh, in contrast uh, futures is another type of uh, derivatives which is very common once again in this case the buyer is obligated he necessarily has to buy or sell at a specific price on a specific day uh, forwards are just another type of futures uh, these are basically the same thing just that futures are traded on the exchange and forwards are traded uh, over the counter uh, and not in the exchange so it's between two um, parties who, who call each other uh, and then they will just uh, uh, why forwards are used by uh, uh, some of these financial institutions is because uh, they would want to do a huge size and then if they go to the exchange and try to trade in the futures then uh, they won't be able to do such a huge size so they will call different counterparties and then try to find someone who would be willing to do such a huge size number one or number two their requirements could be very customized in the sense that uh, uh, they might want uh, uh, an instrument whose expiry date is not the same as the standard expiry dates on the exchange or, uh, or or at a different price level as though from those available in the market okay so having defined options uh, we now look at the different types of options so different types of options are call options and put the two most uh, uh, the, the two categories of options are call options and put options in case of call options the buyer has the right but not the obligation to buy the underlying uh, and in case of put options it's the right but not the obligation to sell uh, when we defined options in the previous slide you must have remembered we said that the buyer has the right but not the obligation to buy at a specific uh, a specific amount at a specific price <coughs> on or before a specific date so th these are the three characteristics of option instruments the price at which the underlying can be bought the date on or before which the option can be exercised and obviously the upfront payment that the buyer has to do to the seller or the writer of the option there are different uh, styles of options if you again go back to the previous slide you will see that the buyer has the option to exercise it on or before a specific day well ba based on whether it could be exercised only on that specific day or it could be exercised at any time prior to ex spe uh, the specific day the option could be either european style or american style so at the moment when you go into uh, a trade on, on an option instrument uh, the uh, it will already be designated whether it's European or American. So you already know whether it's uh, can be exercised only on expiry date or it can be exercised on, at any time prior to the expiry date. The two most common uh, exchange traded uh, styles of options are European and American. In case of uh, exotic uh, type of options, the uh, exoticness could be based on anything. 
it could be part dependent it could be uh, price dependent it could be time dependent in case of time dependent bermudan is is an example of a time dependent exotic option uh in case of bermudan you could exercise it on a fixed set of expiry dates so instead of having one expiry date you have multiple expiry dates and so on and so forth for in case of binary if the price crosses a barrier you get either one or zero you know the payoff is either one if it crosses a particular value and then if it's zero if it doesn't cross a particular value so that is uh, the case of a patch dependent uh, uh price dependent uh, exoticness bermudan is an example of a time dependent exoticness barrier is an example of a patch dependent exotic, exotic option in which case uh, the option becomes worthless if uh at any pro- point of time the price of the underlying crosses a particular uh, value so exoticness could uh, the amount of exoticness that you can have in uh, uh, options is uh, mm, uh, limit is as per the creativity of the people do building it because the more uh, european and americans are uh, exchange traded and exoticness uh, exotic options are uh, between two counter parties who trade the over the counter so uh, it depends on so uh, you could think up of any structure and then uh, if you found a find a counter party who is willing to trade that so that could be your exotic uh, option so there is no limit to the creativity that you can uh, introduce in it so to elucidate the different types of options once again call option and put option what is it exactly in call option the buyer has the right to buy but he does not have the obligation to buy because the caller has a right so in case the caller in uh, the buyer um, invokes that right what happens in that case uh, in that case the seller has the obligation to sell because the buyer has uh, invoked his right therefore the seller is now obligated to sell uh, likewise in case of the put the buyer has the right to sell so in case the buyer invokes his right the seller has now now has the obligation to buy okay uh, before we go further we need to know how the financial payoff uh, uh, looks like so uh, for, from different types of uh, options so let me uh, do it for each type of option in sequence in case of a call option the payoff is uh, somewhat like this this is how the payoff look like looks like uh, what does it mean Uh, this is an option with a strike of 30 remember the characteristics of options in uh, two slides before strike expiry date and premium so the strike is 30 the expiry date is whatever so what does it mean uh, the buyer has the right to buy at 30 but when will the buyer invoke this right to buy at 30 he will only invoke this right to buy at 30 when the uh, underlying is a gr- gr- at a price higher than 30 if the underlying is at a price higher than 30 uh then the buyer will invoke this right to buy and he will buy at 30 when the under, and therefore buy at a discount for example if the underlying is at 36 the buyer of the option can buy the underlying at 30 so he has basically made a profit of 6 because he has bought at 30 something which is worth 36 yeah so this is the break even point beyond which he will buy so he will only exercise the option if the underlying is is uh, is at trading at a price greater than the no, strike and so what is the profit if the underlying is at 36 the buyer gets to buy at 30 so therefore the profit is 6 likewise when the underlying is at 40 the buyer gets to buy at 30 and the profit is 10 so this is how the payout looks like likewise in case of a put option this is how the payout will look like uh, in case of put option the buyer has a, of the option has the right to sell the underlying so the buyer of the option has a right to sell the underlying so when will he sell the underlying at 30 only if the underlying is less than 30 so if the underlying is at 23 the buyer gets to sell at 30 so he makes a profit of 7 so this is how the payout looks like okay here we have not included the premium the if you look at this this payout diagram for the buyer of the option this is the profit to the buyer when the market falls below 30 and this is when it's above 30 now obviously the payout to the seller is the mirror image of this x axis is the price of the underlying so when the underlying is at 30 i would exercise the uh, the y axis is the profit 
the x-axis is the price of the underlying uh, and uh, the premium is not uh, in this case for this uh, scenario there is no premium that the buyer has paid now this is the payout to the buyer if he buys the option with no premium and the payout to the seller is obviously the mirror image of this now if you are to look at it uh, the seller has no benefit at all on either side so what is it uh, what is the what is the incentive to the seller the seller will actually sell this at a premium you will say that okay because the buyer of the option gets to participate in this uh, profitable ride when the underlying goes below 30 therefore i will uh, i will only sell it to him uh, i'll charge a premium from him for uh, doing this transaction so so therefore oh my god why does this happen i checked it this so so this is the premium uh, that the buyer so if the seller charges a premium of 2 rupees from the buyer what happens in that case uh, the buyer will own will incur a loss of 2 rupees um, if the underlying is below 30 and after the underlying crosses 30 the uh, uh, buyer will be able to exercise his option and at 32 he will uh, it will be his break even point okay likewise the pay off to the seller of the call option is he will benefit if the underlying is below 30 uh, why will the seller of the call option benefit the seller of the call option benefit be benefits because the buyer of the call option will not exercise the right to buy at buy the underlying at 30 if the underlying is less than 30 so this this axis is the price of the underlying this axis is the profit